the growth and the buzz that, you know, guys like RJ Hampton and, and LaMelo brought. And I knew that NBA eyes were going to be um, on them. Man. Welcome to another episode of Year One by Clutch Points. I'm your host, Mark Haynes, and this is season two. And my first guest is Mr. First Team All-Rookie himself from the Houston Rockets for Jason Tate, man. Hey, I appreciate you jumping on with me. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Uh, appreciate you uh, letting me come on and, you know, kind of share, you know, how this last season went. And, you know, um, I'm excited. I'm excited to... Uh, see see what we, we're talking about today, so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I'm going to ask some fun, fun questions. It's, I'm, I'm going I'm to poke at you a little bit, just, you know, so be, be prepared for anything. But yeah. first off, I want to I talk about the start. You went undrafted in 2018. And um, just tell me, uh, what was your, your, your mental life going through, you know, being undrafted? Were you expecting to – did you expect to be drafted at – at that time, or what, what was you kind of prepared for? Uh, you know, honestly, I always, you know, felt like I had been an underrated, you know, guy. So um, that's kind of why I play the way I do, just always having that chip on my shoulder. So, um, you know, my senior year, I had a feeling, uh, you know, the odds are always stacked against a fourth year player, uh, especially in my position, being smaller. Um, being, you know, a tweener, what they would call back in the day. So I always knew um, that it might not have happened for me. Uh, being drafted, there were some teams that were interested, but ultimately I knew that my um, career would, would be, you know, harder than, you know, a lot of other guys. And that's kind of always why my motto is I took the steps. You know, some guys get to protect the elevators, but I took the steps and, um, you know, uh, DP and EJ, my agents, uh, told me about a good gig over there in, in, uh, in Europe. And then from Europe, I saw Australia. I saw um, the growth and the buzz that, you know, guys like RJ Hampton and, and LaMelo brought. And I knew that NBA eyes were going to be um, on them. And, you know, I kind of tried to ride their coattail a little bit and, you know, it worked out perfectly. And um, I had a, a pretty good year at, at Houston. Yeah, and that's that's kind of how like your game is. It's like you you know you got the the bigger name players or whatever, but with the way you play, nobody can miss it. Like you're everywhere, you're doing all the right things or whatever. And I think that's what, you know made you special this year. Um, but you get get the call to come to Houston. Uh, how how did that go? How do you remember that day? Yeah, um, like before this was during COVID, so. Uh, before COVID, I had a few teams already reaching out with potential two ways, uh, potential, you know, summer league and or end of the season um, contracts because uh, Australia is over in, uh, in like March. So there's still a couple more uh, months. So and then COVID hit. Boom. Yeah. Everything went down. Uh, we didn't even get to finish the championship in Australia. I came home. And I was just working out, man. I was just working out. There were a few teams that, you know, reached out and were able to. Um, but I just felt that the roster and the approach that the Rockets had, uh, they really wanted me. You know, they really saw something, really wanted to take a chance on me. And uh, small ball, you know, they, they're known for small ball. So it just made sense to go uh, somewhere that fit my style of game. And then uh, Will Weaver, who was my head coach over in Australia, uh, he got the assistant coaching job here. And um, you know, that that was also, you know, f familiar faces. So, yeah. So you mentioned, like, you know, the style of play, you know, the roster just kind of fits you. You come in this season and uh, you, you, the, exp the roster changed on you. It changed mm -hmm. on you pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, Westbrook leave early. And uh, then James Hart, who's been with the, the organization for some time. Um, how did you deal with the change of, especially Hart, especially, because you got yeah. to play with him. And then it was, you know, all kind of drama. I ain't asked you to get into that part. But yeah. how, how was that for you, that whole experience? Um, you know, it, it kind of was, I mean, at this level, um, everybody's so good, you know. Um, there's definitely differences in uh, depending on who's on the floor, but 
regardless on who is on the floor, my role you know, stays the same. You know, I'm going to play hard. I'm going to defend. I'm going to, um, you know, roll. I'm going to set hard screens. If you need me to come off a ball screen, I can. Um, that is why, you know, Houston, I felt was just perfect for me because the, the style that we play, um, it doesn't matter who else is on the floor. Um, I think that I found a way to impact the game. Um, depending on, you know, what the team needs. So I have 29 teammates this year. Uh, I think that a record. But, um, you know, of those games, man, I just found a way to just, you know, stay stay constant. And uh, I think that's always just been who I am and, and what uh, I've always been liable with is just being consistent every night. And that's all I, I try to do is be consistent. Yeah, that, and that's what you did, man. You did a great job at that. But did that, did that whole situation, did you notice it, it was kind of, you know, just something different? Because it, it was a little bizarre. Was it something different that you experienced and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always different, when, especially when, I mean, you're talking about one of the, you know, arguably one of the best scores of all time, you know, Um when that leaves and, and you know, roles change, you know, your yeah. role, role might get a little bigger um, or it might look different, but um, that's why we're in the position we're in, you know? And I think that we got a, a, a good group of young guys and, and some vets. And, you know, this is, like I said, a rebuild year. Um, you know, we, I don't even like to say rebuild year. There's just some things we got to work out. We got to figure out, but, um, this is one of the closest teams I've uh, in my career. So usually that follow it with winning. Uh, there's I haven't been on many teams where, you know, the team camaraderie and the closeness, close, closeness of the team um, doesn't impact winning. So I'm just excited. We've grown even more this summer. And, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. So, with, um, like you said, your game doesn't change much depending on who's on the floor, um, where where did you kind of come up with this style of play or start developing? Is there a player that you kind of looked at, you know, you draw comparisons to guys like P.J. Tucker and Draymond Green and things like that. Is there somebody that you always kind of paid attention to? Um, I pay attention to, you know, I just pay attention to the game. Of course, you know, Draymond and P.J., um, you know, Draymond reaches out, um, reached out to me um, a few times this year. PJ was my vet when I was here, and I learned so much defensively from him in, in the short time I got to spend with him. But um, a lot of the times, man, it's just you got to – there's just certain things you got to learn on the fly, um, just being out there. I think that was the – biggest thing for me is just that throughout the season I remember PJ yelling at me and, and telling me things and I'm like I have no idea what you're talking about it was just moving so fast and then um, <laughs> by end, by the end of the season I'm yelling at the younger dudes and the guys that are you know coming in like saying the same thing and I'm like that's when it clicked like now I get it I get what he was trying to uh, make me understand and yeah. Um, like definitely, you know, PJ, Draymond, um, Jay Crowder, like you see what he does and what he brings to the table. Um, yeah. but there's not just somebody that I, I want to be similar, similar to you can learn every, every great basketball, everybody in the NBA, they're in there for a reason. And that, as they do something so great. Yeah. No, nah, cause yeah, you're different. You, you have, like you said, you have traits and things that are similar to those guys. But none of them you're you're specifically just like you kind of yeah. different. You can do a do, do you can do a bunch of things and and um, being six five six four six six around there. I'm gonna throw all of there. I ain't trying yeah. to short change it, so I'm gonna throw yeah. them all of there. At uh, two thirty, you're I'm assuming you would feel like you're one of the stronger players in the league. Being mm -hmm. in a league, um, who's a guy that you went up against and you was like, yo, this dude is really this dude's strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Dwight Howard, he picked me up. Didn't even pick me up. That was the first time that ever happened. Um, <laughs> but 
uh, guard wise, I mean, of course, Bron, Kawhi is very strong. Um, uh, Eric Bless, so he's really strong. Mm-hmm. Bled is, <laughs> um, but you know, Big Nurk, they was throwing me on all those fives. All those five minutes are like ridiculous. But if we talking about like just like a guy that surprised me, E Bled, um, he he's. He's one of the stronger guards. Huh, yeah, because he, he, he's about, what, 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, six, yeah. He he's 6'3", six, 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 but he bumped me. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then with, with guard, because you, you do everything. Guard, guard basically one through five, you know, being the smaller man. What is your mindset when you get matched up against them fives? Man, you got to do your work early. Try not to let them seal you under the rim. Um, try to push them as far out in that mid post as possible. And you know, hope they <laughs> miss what they offhand. That's all you can do. <laughs> you know, in those situations, you want to try to live with a contested offhand lay or a contested fadeaway. Um, that's all you can do. Hope they miss. <laughs> and then with, with this being the, um, you know, the COVID year, the COVID year of, well, it's been like two years now, but playing, doing the testing and all of that, um, you probably didn't get to see as many, you know, people and celebrities in different cities and whatnot. But in your first year, was there anybody that you met, be player, celebrity, whatever, that kind of had you starstruck? Mm. I want to say that, like you said, like, because it's a COVID year, <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I got, um, yeah, and, I, and I thought that's, that's what I used to, I asked people last year, but last year you could get out and, you know, yeah, people, people, yeah. Tell, tell, tell me about that. Let's scratch, scratch that question. Tell me about that. How was it just, you know, basically playing games, going to the hotel, testing, back to the room? Like, what what was a day, a game day like? Yeah, I mean, it was just really just like, that's the only thing I know. I don't know the other NBA. So for me, it was normal. You know, it yeah. might not be normal for anyone else. I mean, guys with other years, but like this year for the other rookies, like even in our rookie, you know, transition and our our meetings with the NBA Players Association is just like, this is normal. Like we don't know um, anything else. So it's just routine. You know, you wake up, you get your COVID test, you take a nap, you go to shoot around, take another nap, eat, game time, get on a plane, do it again the next day. We'll see. Hopefully, you know, next year we are allowed to have, you know, a little more freedom. Um, I definitely want to see, um, you know, what cities have to offer. I've been overseas for, you know, two right. years. Still things that I haven't seen here. So, right. um, over to it. And that's the same way. This is actually my first year. I, I covered, uh, I was a beat writer for uh, the Warriors this season. <laughs> this is my first year doing that. And like I did an interview with, with with my brother from Yahoo, and he asked me about you know like covering. I was like, this is all you know normal to me doing everything yeah. on Zoom. Like in the locker room, that's probably gonna be weird for me. So I was yeah. you know I'm sure same with you. We like the same, even though you know you made it to the actual movie. Yeah, I'm just I'm just <laughs> following y'all around chasing y'all. <laughs> but uh, man, I'm gonna get you out of here. This last question, I, like I said I, earlier, I appreciate you for jumping on with me. Um, and, you know, congratulations on making first team all rookie. What was it like for you when you got the news of that? Um, I was actually, it was right before the Clippers, uh, who were the Clippers playing? Playoff game, first round. Clippers, that's Ma- right. It was the Mavs. Mavs. Um, and, you know, my 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 agent called me. He was really excited, and then you know my phone started blowing up, and I was like, "Dang, I really got it." Um, I didn't. I don't think it really hit me until like 
you know, the next day. But, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. It actually made me just look forward more to this year. You know, um, you just use it as motivation. Um, it's, it's always good to get acknowledgement and, you know, people pay attention to your story, but uh, there's just more work to do. Like I always said, coming in here, I want to be a 10 year vet. And, you know, that was a great start, but now, you know, you got more eyes, you got, you're a target and, you know, you're going to always get everybody's best. And I'm looking forward to that, you know, pressure diamonds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you notice like towards the end of the year when, when your name was starting to buzz, did you notice, you know, teams kind of doing a little more, paying a little more attention to you? Yeah, for sure. I had to start using my right hand more. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nah, uh, that's that's uh, that's part of it, man. Like um, you got to continue to deepen your bag and, and, and work on your game. And, uh, you know, I feel like last summer was a great summer for me. And um, this summer is going to be even more important. So we just been grinding away and um, hopefully uh, this coming season, y'all can see what I've been working on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Hey, and thank you for jumping on with me real quick. Uh, I don't know if you got anything this summer that you got going on that you want to put out to the world and your, your, your Instagram handles, whatever. Floor yours real quick. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can follow me at O underscore Tate uh, on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I got my clothing line, my built clothing line. Um, just a little about built, just like you've handled diversity, everything you've been through, um, and you're still here. Like you're ready for your 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 moment and, and your opportunity when it comes. You're built for it. So uh, if you want to go, um, Deshaun.com. I also got my coffee. Uh, the proceeds are going to a, a nonprofit here in Houston, um, and uh, yeah, the coffee's delicious. Uh, the the hoodies are soft and comfortable um and you know appreciate you having me on man looking forward to drinking some of that wine yes sir yes sir man i'm gonna get it to you asap man. it's fit fine it's called fit fine wine so it's lower calories and stuff it's made nice and time for athletes so it's good you, you know you, you're gonna enjoy it but jay man appreciate you once again congratulations on making first team all rookie so this is mark haynes clutch points we're signing out with first team all rookie Jay Sean Tate, we're looking forward to seeing big things next year with the Houston Rockets. And this is year one, and we out.